Welcome back guys, moving on to the next question. We have to find the points of intersection between each quadratic f of x and each line g of x. So we have three questions here to do. And when you're finding the points of intersection between a line and a quadratic, there's pretty much only three scenarios that you could run into. And we're actually gonna cover all three scenarios here and I'm gonna show you visually how each one looks. So starting with number one, we got f of x equals x squared plus three x minus 12. So I'm just gonna write that as y equals x squared plus three x minus 12. And then here we got y equals two x plus eight. So how can you solve for the points of intersection between these two? Well, you can see when do the y values equal. So you could do like substitution. So you could take this expression for the y value, two x plus eight, and sub it in for this y value. So you'd have 2x plus 8 equals x squared plus 3x minus 12. Just making the y values equal, seeing when do they equal, at what x value. So from here, notice that this is just an equation to solve. So you could bring this over to the uh, right side we'd have x squared, we'd have 3x minus 2x, which would give us positive 1x, and we'd have negative 12 minus 8, when we bring the positive 8 over, it becomes minus, so that's negative 20. And then from here, notice we just have a quadratic equation. So you could throw this into the quadratic formula, you could try to factor it first, I think this factors smoothly, factors into x plus 5, x minus 4. So notice from here, we could tell x is negative five or x is equal to four. So because we got two solutions, there's actually two points of intersection between this quadratic and this line. So we have the x values at which that happens. What are the corresponding y values? Well, starting with this negative five, you could take this negative five, plug it in here or plug it in there you'll get the same y value, or you should get the same y value. That's actually a good way to check if you do get the same y value, then you know this is correct. So plugging in negative five, I'm gonna plug it in here. Two times negative five is negative 10, plus eight gives us negative two. If I take negative five, plug it in here, I'd have uh, negative five squared, which is 25, uh, minus 15, which is 10, 10 minus 12 is negative two as well. All right, so I get the same y value in both. If I plug in four here, two times four is eight, plus eight gives us 16. And then if I plug in four here, I'll have uh, 16 plus 12, which is 28. 28 minus 12 gives us 16. Right? So those are the two points of intersection here. So we have negative five and negative two, and then we have four and 16, like that. So the way that this looks um, visually is, uh, let me just circle this here, is we have a parabola and then we have a line that is going through it and it's intersecting at two points. So these two points, negative uh, five, negative two, this point here is uh, four and 16. Okay, moving on to number two. We got f of x equals x squared plus two x minus two. So let me split this up here. So we got y equals x squared plus 2x minus 2. And then we have the line y equals 8x minus 11. So same thing, just make the y values equal. So we'll have 8x minus 11 equals x squared plus 2x minus 2. Want to bring everything over to one side. Let's bring all of this over to the right side. So we'll have zero left on the left side. Uh, x squared stays. Uh, 2x minus 8x gives us negative 6x. Then negative 2 plus 11 gives us positive 9. Then from here, this is just a quadratic equation. 
factor it or throw it in the quadratic formula, this actually factors smoothly into x minus 3 times x minus 3. It's a perfect square trinomial, so x minus 3 squared. So here, there's only one solution, an x value of 3. So there's only one point of intersection in this case. And then if you want to get the corresponding y value, plug in 3 into either the quadratic or the line, you should get the same y value. So plugging in 3 here, 8 times 3, 24, minus 11 gives us 13. Plugging in 3 here, 3 squared um, is 9, plus 2 times 3 is 15, minus 2 gives us 13 as well. So solution for this one is there's only one point of intersection, and it's at 3 and 13. So the way this looks visually is you maybe have a quadratic like this. By the way, this is not perhaps exactly how it's going to look, but it's going to look something like this. So you have this quadratic here, and then there's only one point at which the line and the quadratic intersect. So this is 3 and 13. So this line here is uh, g of x, and this quadratic here is f of x. Another way to describe this here is that the line is tangent to the quadratic. So whenever you see the word tangent come up in this section, what they're pretty much saying is that the line and the quadratic have one point of intersection when you see the word tangent come up. And we're gonna be actually doing problems in future videos where I bring this word up and just how to deal with it. You'll probably see it in your textbook. Whenever you see tangent, the line and the quadratic have one point of intersection. That's what it means, right? So this is how it looks visually. And then it could also be like a downward sloping line like that. Or it could even be on the um, on the vertex. So it could be a horizontal line. Uh, slope would be zero in that case. But in this case, we know the slope is positive, so we know it's going to look something like that. This is a negative sloping line, and then this line has a slope of zero. But either way, all cases, they are tangent. The lines are tangent to the quadratic. There is one point of intersection, right? Then moving on to uh, number three. Let's write out these quadratic, uh, this quadratic and this line. So y equals negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 20. And then we got y equals negative 5x plus 13. So like before, make the y values equal. So negative 5x plus 13 equals negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 20. And then same thing like before, you want to take one side, bring it over to the other side, simplify everything, you'll have a quadratic equation. So in this case, I'm going to take the right side, bring it over to the left side, just because I usually like that uh, leading coefficient to be positive. So this comes over, becomes positive 2x squared. There's no other x squared here to simplify it with. Bring this 11x over, so it would be negative 5x minus 11x, which would give us negative 16x. And then 13 plus 20 would give us positive 33. That's going to equal 0. And then from here, this actually doesn't factor smoothly. So what you want to do is you want to plug it into the quadratic formula. So we know a is 2, b is negative 16, the c value is positive 33. So quadratic formula is what? Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we'd have negative negative, so that's positive 16 plus or minus uh, negative 16 squared minus 4 times 2 times 33 all over 2 times the a value, which is 2. And then what's going to happen here is 
under the square root, you're going to get a negative number. Because six, negative 16 squared is 256. And then 4 times 2 times 33, negative 4 times 2 times 33 is negative 264. And 256 minus 264, that is equal to negative 8. This is going to be all over 4. So because we got this here, square rooting a negative, that means that there is no solution to this. Right? That's the discriminant. Remember when the discriminant is negative, there is no solution to the quadratic equation that you are working with. So the answer to number three is that there is no point of intersection. The way that looks is uh, this quadratic opens, um, it opens down, right? Because that leading coefficient is, um, is negative. And then this line slopes downwards. So it's maybe a line that's like that, right? Notice that this line g of x and this quadratic f of x, they are never going to intersect. This is just going to keep going on forever, and then this will go on forever that way, right? So there's no point of intersection. That happens when the quadratic equation you're solving, you get a negative in the square root. And these are the three different cases that you can run into. You could have two points of intersection between a line and a quadratic. You could have one point of intersection when the line is tangent to the quadratic, or you could have no points of intersection, something like this. And in this case, the parabola was uh, opening down because the leading coefficient was negative, but it could also be opening up and there could be a line that just doesn't intersect it. Right? So these are the three cases that you could run into when you're dealing with the intersection between a line and a quadratic.